Summary of Our Town by Thornton Wilder The stage manager prepares the stage by setting up some tables and chairs while the audience is still filing into the theater. After everyone has arrived, the stage manager then addresses the crowd. He tells them that the play they are about to see is called Our Town and is about the town of Grover's Corners. He tells the crowd about Dr. and Mrs. Gibbs, as well as their friend Mr. Webb, who is the editor of the Grover's Corners Sentinel. It turns out that Dr. Gibbs died in 1930 and that his wife died a lot earlier. It's early in the morning, and Dr. Gibbs is on his way home after helping to deliver twin babies. In the Webb home, Mrs. Webb starts making breakfast at the same time as Mrs. Gibbs. Dr. Gibbs meets Joe Crowell, a young boy who brings the newspaper to people. The stage manager tells the crowd that Joe finished from high school at the top of his class and got a scholarship to go to MIT. He could have done well as an engineer, but he joined the army during World War I and died in France. The neighborhood milkman, Howie Newsom, brings milk to the Gibbs and Webbs. The children of George and Rebecca Gibbs and Emily and Wally Webb come down for breakfast. The kids run to school, and Mrs. Gibbs talks to Mrs. Webb. She lets Mrs. Webb know that someone made her an offer of $350 for an old piece of furniture in her house. She tells Mrs. Webb that she's always wanted to visit Paris and says she might sell it if she knew Dr. Gibbs would use the money for a trip. Dr. Gibbs, on the other hand, doesn't want to travel other than to see civil war fight places every two years. When the women are talking, the stage manager walks in and says he wants to talk about Grover's Corners with the crowd. Professor Willard, a professor at the nearby State University, is asked to come on stage and talk about the town. Mr. Webb is then asked to come forward and give the political and social report on Grover's Corners. Three people in the crowd ask Mr. Webb questions. One of them asks if the town has a lot of culture. This is what Mr. Webb says, there is not much. The stage manager tells everyone that it's time to go back to the show and that it's now early afternoon. When George and Emily get home from school, George asks Emily to help him with his homework because Emily is smart and does well in school. The stage manager talks to the crowd again to let them know about something new that's happening in town. At the same time that the cornerstone of the new bank building is being buried, people in the town are putting different things in a time capsule. People from the town are putting in copies of the Bible, the New York Times, and the Grover's Corners Sentinel, as well as the U.S. Constitution and Shakespeare's works. The stage manager also plans to add a copy of Our Town. Tonight, a church band is getting ready to sing Blessed Be the Tie That Binds at a Wedding. George is asked by Dr. Gibbs to do jobs around the house and what he wants to do after high school when they are at the Gibbs house. In the long run, George wants to take over his uncle's farm after taking time to work on it. When Mrs. Gibbs, Mrs. Webb, and Mrs. Soames get home from choir practice, they talk about Simon Stimson, the chorus director, who is drunk. The women part ways, and Mrs. Gibbs comes back home. Dr. Gibbs refuses to let her talk to her husband about taking a big break from work at some point. The two of them are both upset that Grover's Corners is becoming more civic as more people lock their doors at night. Rebecca tells George that her friend got a letter from Jane Crofit, the Crofit Farm, Grover's Corners, Sutton County, New Hampshire, United States of America, continent of North America, Western Hemisphere, the Earth, the Solar System, the Universe, the Mind of God. The stage manager tells everyone that Act 1 is over. At the start of Act 2, the stage manager says that three years have passed. As usual, Howie Newsom brings milk and Mrs. Gibbs and Mrs. Webb make breakfast in their own kitchens. C. Joe Cromwell's younger brother now brings the paper to town. It slowly becomes clear that Emily and George are going to get married. Inside their kitchen, Dr. and Mrs. Gibbs talk about their own wedding and how scared they were. When George goes to the Webb house, Mrs. Webb tells him he can't see Emily on the morning of their wedding. Emily can't come down, so she goes upstairs to keep her. Mr. Webb and George talk. Mr. Webb talks about some marriage advice his father gave him, like how the husband should be in charge and tell the wife what to do. 
But Mr. Webb says he has done the opposite and his marriage is happy. The stage manager stops the play to show a return to the beginning of George and Emily's relationship. George is in his last year as a junior in high school. One day, after school, he and Emily are talking. George hears Emily's confession that she doesn't like how he's been acting lately and that girls at school think he's cocky. Emily told George the truth, and George thanks her. The two of them then get ice cream drinks at the nearby drugstore. George talks about his future plans. He tells Emily that he likes her and finds out that she feels the same way. After this, George decides not to go to farm college but to stay in Grover's Corners with Emily instead. The stage manager goes back to the wedding day and acts as the minister during the service. Emily and George are both scared about the wedding and get stressed out at the last minute. They are both worried about growing up and leaving their childhoods behind. They finally understand how much they love each other, though, and the stage manager marries them. He then ends the second act. The stage manager says that nine years have passed since act two as the third act starts. There are four dead people in the cemetery, Mrs. Gibbs, Simon Stimson, Mrs. Soames, and Wally Webb. The town's mortician, Joe Stoddard, talks to Sam Craig, who grew up in Grover's Corners and is back for the funeral of his niece Emily Webb, who died giving birth. Blessed be the tie that binds is sung at the funeral by George, Dr. Gibbs, Mr. and Mrs. Webb, and others. Emily comes in and joins the other dead figures. She wants to know if she can live her past life again. Even though Mrs. Gibbs tells her she can, she and the stage manager try to stop her because it hurts so much. Emily decides to experience her 12th birthday, even though they told her not to, and the stage manager takes her back to that day. She can't believe how different the town looks now and how young her parents look. She is also sad because she knows what will happen in the future, like Wally dying too soon. Emily finally can't take the pain any longer and asks to be taken back to the graveyard. The dead souls agree with her that the living don't realize life while they live it and don't value their daily lives as much as they should. George goes to the graveyard, tears up, and kneels down next to Emily's grave. Many people in Grover's Corners are going to sleep now, so the stage manager tells the crowd that they should too, while the stars do their old, old crisscross journeys in the sky. He pulls a curtain over the stage to end the stage play. About the author. Thornton Wilder was born in Madison, Wisconsin. He began writing plays at a very young age. He first went to Oberlin College and then switched to Yale University, where he finished in 1920. After high school, Wilder taught at a school in New Jersey and kept writing. His book The Bridge of San Luis Rey won the Pulitzer Prize in 1927. After that, his plays Our Town, 1938, and The Skin of Our Teeth, 1942, won him the Pulitzer Prize in theater twice. He taught in a number of schools after serving in World War II, including Harvard. Despite this, he kept writing and became friends with many famous authors of the time, including Ernest Hemingway and Willa Cather. Wilder was one of the most praised American writers of the 20th century. She died in 1975. His plays are still put on today, especially Our Town. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.